uh, personality marketing. Personality marketing, let me say this right. Personality marketing, is it right for you? Hi, I'm Brian Pombo. Welcome back to the Orange Office in Grants Pass, Oregon. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? I, the only reason why I had the mic gag is because we're talking about comedians today. I got to see something that uh, I think just came out, which is really unusual for me. Okay, I don't normally get to see things that just come out. Let me make sure I get my microphone so you can actually hear me. I don't normally see things when they first come out. It, it takes me a while. I, I catch up real late on these things. Netflix just put out the latest season, as I understand it, just put out the latest season of uh, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, which if you haven't ever seen it, very worth seeing if you enjoy uh, watching any type of comedians whatsoever. Jerry Seinfeld hosts the show. He takes a different car out that he thinks represents the person he's going to be picking up. He picks up a famous person, quite oftentimes someone that has something to do with comedy, even if they don't have anything to do with, even if they're not stand-up comedians. In this particular episode, first episode, I saw, I saw the thing for it. I said, oh, we got to watch that right away. It was Eddie Murphy. If you aren't familiar with Eddie Murphy, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> He's an amazing comedic actor going all the way back to the uh, early 80s is when he, he first uh, hit the scene uh, with Saturday Night Live and so forth. Go back and watch some old Eddie Murphy movies and you'll, you'll be caught up. But Eddie Murphy's on there with Jerry Seinfeld. They're talking about comedy and there are, are great stuff throughout the whole thing. There are a lot of parallels that come back to personality marketing. I'm got, I wanted to point out one to you right, right away. Even if you haven't seen it, this won't ruin it for you. In the, in the talk, as they're going, they're driving around, they're sitting drinking coffee, they're driving around talking. At one point, he talks about being at a point where he had so many people that just liked him and they were there to just see him. It didn't matter what he said they were gonna find it funny because they enjoyed him. They were already kind of followers. They had already bought in. They were indoctrinated into the Eddie Murphy cult. That's not what he said. That's my own words. But it has a parallel and you can see it across the board. You take any major personality, even somebody in a small niche, if they have a bit of a following, if they have people that either find them a celebrity or an expert or see them as, as somebody that's kind of beyond where they're at with something, they will adapt, uh, they will adopt kind of a uh, cult-like personality to them. And it, it, it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter if they're a sports figure. It doesn't matter if they're president of the United States. It doesn't matter who they are. People will pull this along and the people that end up following them will follow them blindly defend them blindly. Uh, but I, just thinking off the top of my head, O.J. Simpson, anyone that remembers, he was, a, he was a popular, very popular football player, professional football player, and he wasn't, all that, he wasn't all that popular at the time when he got into trouble with the law and had a situation where he was on trial for killing his wife. That wasn't, that, it, 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 he was known but he wasn't that popular across the board. People my age and younger, they knew the name. They saw him in movies like The Naked Gun and everything, but they didn't know that much about it. But he still had a following. He still had people that defended him no matter what came out, no matter how much it looked like he was guilty. You still have people to this day that will defend him, not based on facts or the, fa or the idea that they watched every hour of his trial because it was all televised. Uh, it has nothing to do with it. They believed in the person. They were stuck on the person. It, it's a very powerful tool, but it, it obviously can totally be misused, and it's misused all the time. And if, if you're going to adopt personality marketing in your business, you have to realize the potential for one of these things happening. Let me get back to Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy was talking about everybody just being enamored with him, and to the point where he would go out on stage and he'd test it out, and he'd he just stopped talking and just stand there. And he said, and people would laugh. And he said, one time he held it for 10 minutes and people kept laughing. They kept, and he kind of moved his face a little bit and he kind of look a little funny or, or he'd clear his throat and people would start laughing. He said, he, he, he knew that he was at a special place. And I think I've heard him discuss it in other interviews 
where he he talks about the dangers of having that type of following and how it can go to your head you can let it go to your head you can think you're really hot stuff or whatever else there's a lot of power in personality marketing i encourage people to use it but don't misuse it and realize that when you're out there as a personality, when you're out there doing any type of content marketing and you're doing it consistently as a person, you're going to have people that are for you and you're gonna have people that are against you. The people that are against you can sometimes be just as useful. Who do you think shares more about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez than people who dislike her? I think I see much more me, much more memes and everything else from those people than anybody else. She's gotten more popular all over the people that disdain her. Same with Donald Trump on the other end. You, you have, they thrive off of people being against them. It cements the people who are for them into being more for them. It promotes them, even though it's promoting a negative side, it's still promoting their name and their brand out there. So don't be scared of negativity. Negativity comes along with building up your personality brand and putting it out there more and more. These are all things to consider when thinking about having some more personality branding in your business, uh, writing books and everything we're gonna talk about in the future because I've gotten to interview a lot of amazing writers and all their unique stories about what led them to end up writing books, but the results of them writing a book are all very, very common. We're gonna talk about that more tomorrow. If you happen to be in the self-reliance field and you're a owner, business owner, or you're an executive in a business that helps people to become more self-reliant or you have a story that promotes self-reliance, you're someone I'd like to talk to, go to dreambizchat.com. You can find the link in the description wherever you're watching this. You can find a link, just click on that. Unless you're on Instagram, it's tough to get a link in there. So just go to dreambizchat.com. Go there, watch the quick video, tell me what you think of it. If it sounds like something that would interest you, fill out the application, we'll see if we can talk. We'll see you tomorrow when we talk about books and how they can help promote your personality. We'll see you then.